That's right, I got over 100 FPS in 4K. I'm gonna show you how the Ally X can be the best hybrid system whilst using the best USB 4 eGPU currently available. I'll be showing you how to get your eGPU running stably without any micro stuttering or anything like that. And I'm gonna show you performance of games maxed out modern games at 4K with ray tracing on and off to see how it performs. I've already covered the parts I'm using and how I've created a custom enclosure for this eGPU setup. So go and watch those videos. But just to recap, I am using a Corsair 750E modular power supply, an MSI RTX 4070 12 gigabytes GPU, and the ADT Link UT3G, which is currently the best eGPU USB 4 controller you can get with the lowest amount of bandwidth limitation. This video has been a really long time coming. I wanted to spend a good amount of time testing this and really making sure it was stable, finding solutions to any problems that I had, and then showing you those solutions. I'm just gonna be giving you all the answers. Aren't you lucky? But before all of that, here's a word from our sponsor. This is the TomTok G47 Travel Bag. It's tailor-made for almost all handhelds. We've paired it with the Asus ROG Ally X due to the removable W-shaped screen and joystick protector inside. There's also ample room to store all of your accessories inside. With high quality YKK zippers and a water repellent surface, this could be the best travel case yet. Save up to 25% directly from the TomTok website this Black Friday between November the 21st and December the 6th, link in the description. Okay, so I'm gonna show you now how to set up your eGPU so that it's running perfectly. I've spent so many hours figuring all this stuff out and finding articles and random posts from years ago because eGPUs are, they're not so common, it's pretty niche, right? So I'm gonna be showing you how to do everything to make this the best experience possible because it's not really a Nintendo Switch, is it? Oh, and disclaimer, I am using NVIDIA GPU, right? If you're using AMD, then you're gonna have to sideload 780M drivers from AMD because the like Z1 Extreme drivers from Asus will clash with your AMD graphics card. So yeah, I've not gone that route. I've gone NVIDIA because there's no clash, it just works. So make sure you install your GPU driver in safe mode. I actually had some issues when I didn't do this, so doing it this way was better. And also when installing new drivers, use DDU or display driver uninstaller in safe mode first, and then return to safe mode and install your latest driver. Now it sounds silly, but this actually helped me with a couple of problems I was having. I've also not installed GeForce Experience or whatever they call it, you know, the little app thing. I just manually download the drivers as I go and then install them in safe mode. Now you might find it's still not working. <laughs> so if you go to device manager and then go to display adapters and you see it's there, but you click on the properties and it says, Error 43, well, then you've got a problem. But I'm gonna show you the solution. So what you need to do is go down in the description and find the link for the NVIDIA Error 43 fixer. Now run this if you get the error code 43 when installing new drivers or the first time you set up your eGPU. Now I did run into this issue, but as soon as you run the driver fixer, it just works. Like it refreshes and then ba-ding and then the only reason you need to like run this again is if you reinstall the graphics driver. So I've got this saved on my Ally just so that whenever I change drivers, I run the fixer and then it works. But if you just stick with one like driver, then you won't have this problem. Now the next thing is to go into display properties and only show on screen too, because you don't want to be sending data back from the eGPU through the USB cable back to the Ally X because you will lose performance. Because obviously you're outputting data from the Ally to the GPU, which you then should be sending from your HDMI to your screen. But instead, if you leave that screen still on, then you're gonna be sending data to the eGPU through the USB cable back through the USB cable to the Ally X and then potentially also to another display that is going to eat into your performance. So just don't do that, just don't. This follows into disable your iGPU. So this is the integrated GPU part of the Z1 Extreme APU. So you can do this by going into device manager, going to display adapters, and then you will see the AMD display adapter and then just turn this off. And then if you want to Go handheld again and then play again, just re-enable it. But you do want to disable this because some games it will introduce stuttering and other stuff like that. I have played 
a fair few games without any issues, but I've just got mine set to disable every time I plug it in, but you will have to do this manually each time. Now head over to Armory Crate, set your VRAM to auto to give it 23.6 gigabytes of RAM to system since our GPU has its own dedicated 12 gigabytes and we disabled the iGPU so we don't need to split the RAM here. We wanna give as much to system as possible. Now next up, I've created a custom power profile to get the most out of the APU. So I've just maxed out all the sliders. I've called it eGPU and I've set my games so that once it's plugged in and docked, it just automatically goes to the eGPU setting. And I've also put some more of aggressive fan curves here just because, you know, I'm basically fully loading that APU. And on that point, turn off CPU boost. Now, this can actually cause crashing in some games and it also makes the CPU sustain really high temperatures. So I found it's best off and I was monitoring this. So I left CPU boost on and I was monitoring it and yeah, it was just like maxed out. CPU boost was just like full pelt on. The temps were really high and yeah, some games just weren't liking that. Next up, head over to the NVIDIA control panel and go to power management settings and set to prefer maximum performance performance. And this just ensures that the GPU is just getting maximum performance. It's just like fully loaded, which you want it to be because you're going to be playing games on it. And finally, this is optional and game dependent, but disable resizable bar, also known as rebar, with NVIDIA Profiler Inspector if you experience micro stuttering in a specific game. And this is exactly what I had. I know Star Wars Outlaws is absolutely screwed right now on 24H2, but <laughs> before that happened, <laughs> I was getting hideous micro stutter. Like some people probably wouldn't notice it, but I did and it really got me. Going into the NVIDIA profile inspector and disabling rebar completely fixed this. It was so smooth. Yeah, a really good one. So if you're struggling with a certain game, like having real like tiny micro stutters and it just looking a bit off as if like the frame time is like totally wrong or something, try this. For those of you planning on using the ADT UT3G, make sure GPU-Z displays your bus interface as running 4.0 times 4. If all goes to plan, CUDA-Z should show your speeds on the top around 3600 megabytes per second. Megabytes. What a word. And that converts to around 3,800 megabytes per second. And this just ensures that your UT3G is running at like maximum performance, right? Because this is the only way to get PCIe times four. So if these numbers are wrong or it's not showing that, then there's probably something wrong and maybe start again, you know, uninstall your drivers and go again. So now let's go over some game performance. Now this is absolutely worst case scenario because I am, you know, to the max, pushing these games completely to the wall, all max out settings, ray tracing on, all that kind of stuff at 4K. Yes, I'm gonna use DLSS, but I wanted to stress this graphics card set up as much as I could using my 4070. Now, of course you could lower resolutions, lower your graphics settings or whatever to get better performance. But you know, I, I just wanted to see what this was really capable of maxed out. And of course you could also just <laughs> change the graphics card, get a better graphics card. But most suggest that a 4070 Super is like the top end before it kind of like bottlenecks itself out via that Thunderbolt connection, that USB 4 connection, right? So. I went for the 4070 because the jump from a 4070 to a 4070 Super was something insane, like $150 difference here in the UK for like 10 to 15% performance increase. It wasn't worth it. So kicking it off, we are starting with Spider-Man Miles Morales, 4K DLSS frame gen off, DLSS set to quality, very high preset with ray tracing off. Now we're seeing an average of 89 FPS here with 1% lows of 53. Now turning ray tracing on completely nukes it and we see an average of 35 FPS with 1% lows of 24 FPS. Moving over to Ghost of Satsuma, we've got 4K DLSS frame frame gen off, DLSS set to quality, very high preset, averaging only 58 FPS with 1% lows of 38. Now I've definitely played this before and got better settings here. So maybe I needed to restart the ally again before testing this one because I think I did it off the back of the other one, but, but whatever, we'll just carry on. However, with DLSS frame gen on, we are capable of getting 84 FPS on average with 1% lows of 53 FPS. Now moving over to Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, 4K DLSS frame generation off, DLSS set to quality, very high preset, we're averaging 54 FPS with horrendous 1% lows of 13 FPS. 
DLSS frame gen set to on. We're averaging 63 FPS with 1% lows of 19 FPS. There's some really bad 1% lows there, but you know, there we go. With DLSS frame gen off, but now DLSS set to ultra performance with ray trace shadows and reflections on, we're now seeing average of 78 FPS with 1% lows of 43. So that's a big difference going from DLSS quality to ultra performance. And we're actually getting some more playable numbers here. Now with DLSS frame generation off, DLSS still set to ultra performance, but now with ray traced shadows and reflections off, We've managed to hit that 100 FPS at 4K that I mentioned to you about. It's not clickbait. Now, yeah, okay, it's upscaled for sure, but still, we're averaging 117 FPS with 1% lows still above 100 FPS, 109 FPS. Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered 4K DLSS frame generation off. DLSS set to quality with very high presets selected. We're averaging 55 FPS with 1% lows of 41 FPS. Still playable, in my opinion. With DLSS frame generation on, we're seeing 63 FPS with 1% lows of 50 FPS. But if we turn DLSS frame gen off and now change DLSS to ultra performance, we're seeing 66 FPS with 1% lows of 48 FPS. And now just to show you what changing the resolution can do, we'll try 1440p with DLSS frame generation off but DLSS back up to quality, and that gives us 73 FPS average versus the 55 at 4K, and a 1% low of 54 FPS versus 41 at 4K. So that's a 33% improvement on average between 1440p and 4K. Moving over to Resident Evil 4 Remake 4K with prioritized graphics preset, but textures bumped up from two gigabytes up to eight gigabytes with ray tracing off. FSR 2 set to quality, averaging 85 FPS with 1% lows of 66. Now this one really got me, but let's turn off FSR 2. So we're now running native 4K and we're averaging 71 FPS with 1% lows of 60 FPS. That's, that really got me. Now with ray tracing on high, but FSR 2 set to quality again, now we're averaging 63 FPS with 1% lows of 50 FPS. Now FSR 2 disabled, and that means we're back to native 4K, but with ray tracing on high, gives us weirdly the same result as FSR 2 enabled, but with 1% loss in the 1% lows. So we see an average of 63 FPS with 1% lows of 49 FPS. Now I'm actually really impressed by how capable the UT3G and my 4070 are at playing modern titles at 4K, like maxed out. So yes, I am using DLSS of course, but providing the game is at 50 FPS-ish, I actually find this extremely playable. As we saw with Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, simply changing the resolution from 4K to 1440p, everything else the same, saw an improvement of 33% gains in FPS. So, of course, you could just change the resolution. Or you could find some optimized guides. You know, I've just put everything max just to see what this could really do. But yeah, changing the graphic settings down to high instead of like maxed out or whatever, or just running everything at 1440p is going to give you a better experience. But again, even 4K maxed out, I'm finding it pretty playable. You could even just drop it down from quality DLSS preset down to like performance or balanced, and you're still gonna get an improvement in frame rate. So yes, we've just proved that the Ally X can be the best hybrid system on the market. And I really think eGPUs are gonna see like a resurgence, especially now we're seeing the introduction of Thunderbolt 5, which boasts three times the bandwidth of the UT3G that we've tested here today. So there's a potential we could see an Asus ROG Ally 2 with a Thunderbolt 5 port and maybe a Thunderbolt 5 enclosure, something reminiscent of like the Razer cores would be incredible, where it's all just built in, you buy it, drop your graphics card in, close it, and away you go. This could be insane. And it could be a true way for eGPUs not only to make a comeback, but to be viable without a massive loss in performance. Because even the UT3G here is somewhere around the 15 to 30% loss in performance of the card that you're actually gonna be using. So Thunderbolt 5 could be the way to close that gap 
really, really, you know, make it really small. So has the journey been worth the countless hours of blood, sweat, and tears? Is it worth it? Do I recommend that you do it? Well, you'll have to wait <laughs> for the next video where AJ and I explain and discuss just that. And that's gonna round up this little mini eGPU series I've been doing week by week and be the conclusion of it. So of course, do what you do best. Go down there, like this video, subscribe, leave me a comment on, you know, your experience with eGPUs. Are you gonna do it? Are you not? Are you gonna wait for Thunderbolt 5? Gonna wait for an Ally 2? Who knows? I wanna hear from you. And, you know, what do you think about my findings here today? And of course, talking of AJ a second ago, go and check out a podcast where we discuss all things gaming and check out another video from me down here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.